Hello everyone, a warm welcome to you all from SGT University. I am Suchandra Gupta from Faculty of Lighthill Sciences. Today, my topic of discussion falls under the domain of microbiology, where I will discuss about introduction and classification of fungi, under which I will cover morphological features of fungi, classification of fungi, reproduction of fungi, growth and nutrition factors of fungi, useful and harmful properties of fungi, and the additional one is safety measures to be followed in the mycology laboratory. Fungus, it's a Latin word that means mushroom. The branch of biological science which deals with the study of fungi is known as mycology. Medical mycology is study of epidemiology, ecology, pathogenesis, diagnosis and therapeutic modalities of fungal infections in human beings. Fungi are achlorophyllous, eukaryotic, multicellular organisms with range of internal membrane system, membrane bound organelles and well defined cell wall. Fungi are widely found in environment and most of them are harmless commensals, contaminants or non-pathogenic agents. Some of the fungi are even useful in mankind in several ways. However, a small number of these organisms is causing disease among men, animals and plants. Fungi are broadly divided into four main groups. First, yeast. They are unicellular fungi which reproduce by asexual process known as budding, that is blastospore formation with narrow or broad based budding or by fission. Example, penicillin species. Some of the yeast reproduce by sexual process also showing telomorph state, example, cryptococcus neoformans. Yeasts are ubiquitous in environment, being found on fruits, vegetables and other materials. And the second is molds. Fungal spores germinate and grow into slender, tubular, thread-like structures called hyphae, which may be septed or non-septed. All molds are composed of branching hyphae. They grow by apical extension, forming an interwoven mass called as mycelium. In most of fungi, hyphae have regular cross walls, that is, septed as seen in Aspergillus and in lower fungi. They are usually absent, that is, non-septed as seen in Zygomycetes. The third is yeast-like. These fungi also reproduce by budding and exist as yeasts for part of their life cycle, but buds fail to get separated, hence elongation takes place forming pseudohyphae as seen in Candida species. Fourth, dimorphic fungi. These fungi have two types of morphology at two different temperatures like 25 degrees Celsius and 37 degrees Celsius such as yeast forms or spherule at body temperature. The true pathogens are dimorphic and endemic in nature. Capsule Some of the fungi produce an extracellular polysaccharide in the form of capsule. For example, Cryptococcus species. The capsular material determines virulence and plays an important role in eliciting host immune response and provides basis for diagnostic tests like latex agglutination test for Cryptococcus. Cell wall. The fungi possesses a dynamic and plastic multi-layered rigid cell wall located external to the plasma lemma. The cell wall is structurally and biochemically complex containing chitin, 
water soluble homopolymer of n acetyl glucosamine mannans glucans and other complex polysaccharides in association with polypeptides are layered on chitin cell wall is responsible for maintaining shape that characterizes each growth form like yeast and hyphae and it acts as permeability barrier that protects the protoplast against physical and osmotic injuries it plays nutritional roles and is the structure that mediates the initial interaction between fungi and environment plasmolemma inner to cell wall membrane enclosing complex cytosols is called cytoplasmic membrane or plasmolemma which is composed of lipids glycoproteins and ergosterols the fungi possesses ergosterols in contrast to cholesterol which is major sterol found in tissue of mammals this is clinically very significant because most of the antifungal strategies are currently based on targeting the ergosterol in fungal cytoplasmic membrane the taxonomical classification based on the production of sexual spores the kingdom fungi has been divided into four medically important phyla these are as follow first phylum zygomycota they are lower fungi produce sexual spores known as zygospores and possesses aseptic hyphae for example rhizopus and muca second phylum ascomycota they produce sexual spores known as ascospores and possesses septic hyphae example aspergillus third phylum basidiomycota they produce sexual spores known as basidiospores example cryptococcus fourth is phylum deuteromycota which is also known as fungi imperfecti in majority of the medically important fungi the sexual state is either absent or unidentified yet hence they are traditionally grouped as fungi imperfecti asexual reproduction it is the outcome of mitosis which involves budding or fission where total number of chromosomes it remains same chlamydospores arthrospores and sexual spores are usually formed in large number as result of mitotic nuclear divisions a fungus may produce more than one type of sexual spores and they are usually designated as microspores also known as microconidia and macrospores also known as macroconidia these spores may be born endogenously within sporangium and are known as sporangiospores or they may be born exogenously and are called as conidiospores or simply conidia the arrangement of conidia may be of following patterns first acropetal in this youngest conidium is at the top of the chain as seen in cladosporium and alternaria species second basipetal in this the youngest conidium is at the bottom of the chain as in aspergillus third sympodial this is mainly characterized by continued growth after the main axis has produced terminal spores by the development of succession of apex each of which originates below and to one side of the previous apex then next is sexual reproduction in sexual reproduction compatible strains mate and haploid strains fuse to form a diploid it consists of plasmogamy that is cytoplasmic fusion karyogamy that is union of two nuclei 
and meiosis that is haploid formation the number of chromosomes is reduced to half preceded by fusion of protoplasm as well as nuclei of two cells most of the fungi found in nature can grow readily on simple source of nitrogen and carbohydrates the medically significant fungi are mesophilic and have an optimal growth range considerably below the body temperature the optimum temperature in vitro for majority of fungi is between 25 degrees celsius and 37 degrees celsius the fungi prefer acidic ph and therefore most of the fungal culture media have ph range towards acidic slight useful properties of fungi fungi are widely used in industry as source of food particularly edible wild or domesticated mushrooms of all shapes sizes and colors which belongs to basidiomycetes fungi have been used to alter texture improve flavor and increase palatability and digestibility of natural and processed foods for example the yeast that is saccharomyces cerevisiae is used in leavening of bread and other baked products hence it is known as baker's yeast the discovery of popular antibiotic penicillin from penicillin notatum by alexander fleming in 1928 was a real breakthrough in history of medical sciences which revolutionized the basic approach in treating infectious diseases the fungi are now therapeutically being used as probiotics along with bacterial species like lactobacillus and bifidobacterium the pathogenic fungi are responsible for superficial subcutaneous systemic and opportunistic infections in man and animals the fungi especially molds can cause decay of fabrics timber leather electrical insulation and other synthetic materials there are two most common means of getting infections by fungi in laboratory that is first is inhalation of conidia that are aerosolized and accidental inoculation through sharp objects example needles scalpel blades and broken glasses while handling specimens there are general safety measures like never smell or examine fungal culture in the open petri dish The handling of clinical material as well as fungal isolates should be done under safety code. It is essential for both medical as well as classical mycologist to adhere standard safety measures during their laboratory work. In diagnostic laboratory, every clinical sample should be taken as highly infectious unless it is proved otherwise. So I hope the concept of today's topic that is the introduction and morphological features classification and reproduction of fungi are now clear to you all now in my next e lecture series I'll discuss about laboratory diagnosis of fungal infections till then keep learning keep growing and stay safe thank you for watching this video